got to keep this handy. So close and count. I heard that. Hello. Welcome to what will be the, uh, well, I'm hoping it will be the final uh, chapter of this uh, Pulse Rifle project. So, familiar with this rifle from the last video, so this is the one where we've done some uh, basic upgrades. Now, what I'm wanting to do is something a bit more ambitious in this video. So, we're going to be taking a lot of the same mods that we made in this one and then applying it to the other Pulse Rifle kit I've got. And I'm just going to walk through some of the changes I'm going to be making um, and then I'll take you through the journey on that. So the first thing we're going to be doing is going to be doing a very different style of a custom paint job on this. So this is the one I did on this, very basic um, but very effective, don't get me wrong. But for this version I'm actually going to completely spray and do a weathered metal effect on this and it will be done in three stages um, which you'll see shortly if this video goes to plan unlike most of my videos so we'll do the same modification to the side as we did with this for taking the receiver on and off but painting wise we're going to basically paint this completely silver using the chrome spray paint that we've used in other areas then from there, the technique is with a bit of grease or Vaseline, we then basically would do brush marks, scuff marks, uh, bits where metal would be exposed and we just wipe this grease uh, in place. And then we do a complete coating of black on top of it. Now what the grease does is the grease will stop the black paint from bonding with the chrome underneath. And then what we do from there, we apply a little bit more of the grease paint to the edges of the black that are now where the chrome is. So let's say if we did this corner here, we would then put another bit of grease on top. So it's going a bit into the black and then we would spray over it with olive uh, drab paint to get it to the color it's similar now then once it's all dry you can wipe off the grease and what that will create is an effect where you see the green paint wearing into the black wearing into the chrome which will give it that metal effect but what I can also do then is very gently by scratching and scuffing some of the areas of the paint it will expose the black paint underneath and then a little bit more to expose the chrome and that should give this a very weathered metal effect so that's the main paint job we're going to do and obviously that'll take a bit of time we will do the same mods for the iron sights as we did on this rifle um one thing i didn't do in the last video which i'm kicking myself for because it was something i planned to do so the ammo counter here i'm just going to show you by turning it on he says, there's a switch, there it is. So that's very, very bright. Now, inside the pulse rifle, this is the panel that is under here that covers that. Now, what I want to do, what I want should have done in the last video, and I have to go back and do it, is I'm going to put a bit of tinted material on and you can see the difference it makes because that is very, very bright. So what I'm gonna do is cut a piece out, put it on this, mount that in there, and that I think just makes that counter look a lot better. So yeah, super bright, tinted. So that is one of the different mods we're gonna do. The big, big change to this new rifle that we're gonna do is gonna be the grenade launcher. I gave you a sneak peek of this in the last video. So this is uh, gonna be uh, well, this is the prototype. I'm currently still printing and working on the uh, new one. But once this is done, um, I'm just having to make some modifications to how this fits so it's compatible with the pulse rifle. We're then going to look at installing one of these um, onto the pulse rifle. So we'll have obviously the rifle and the grenade launcher. And if all goes to plan, we'll have a little video that will show this actually working in its prototype stage, showing its development, which will be uh, in this video later on. But yeah, so then um, the other things from there we can do. Um, this is something I didn't show in the last video, which I'm a bit kicking myself for because I missed it again. But I've just made some very simple sling hooks. All I've done is use a bit of paracord, a little bit of wrapping around on there, and that gives it plenty of stability to attach a sling should I ever want to. So uh, one of the uh, painting jobs that I'll also do is on the original spaz cage 
because even though I'm not going to be using this in the new pulse rifle, I'm going to paint it up and kit it out like I did the other one. So if anything ever goes wrong, I can swap it back. But I also thought it'd be good to actually show you how I did this paint job. Um, so I'm going to kind of show you what I did to create that effect because it is quite good on the other rifle. And honestly, I don't need to do anything extra to improve it in my uh, humble opinion. But all basically I used was two acrylic paints. So I've got a black and a silver. So I'm gonna have a bit of fun now, just making a dark metallic color with a bit of black and a bit of silver. And obviously this is where I hope everything goes to plan because last time I did this, I wasn't on camera. But it seems whenever I'm on camera recently filming things, things seem to like to go wrong for me. It just seems to be the way it goes at the moment. Um, now, I'm not actually gonna be using any brushes. I'm just gonna be using bits of uh, foam for this so just like just a few bits of that is all i need probably don't even need that much to be honest i will need to add a little bit of water so all i'm going to try and do is get like almost a gunmetal gray color by mixing these two together and the good thing is it doesn't have to be perfect because in a weird way the imperfections will actually add to the texture of what i'm trying to do then literally all I did is just quite literally wipe it on. Now as long as I keep going in one direction, it almost looks a little bit like brushed metal. And this initial color is just more of a, a base coat is the best way to describe it. And it doesn't need to be too thick because I'll be touching it up with other colors. And it's a lot easier to paint as well when it's uh, disassembled. Originally, I painted this on the pulse rifle that was fully assembled. So this is actually a lot quicker and easier. The good thing is, because it's acrylic, it does dry really quickly. So already you can see quite a difference between it. So let's just swap these two around. Let's do this one now. The only downside sometimes when you're using a quick acrylic is uh, it can dry out in the pot quickly as well. So luckily this is quite speedy applying. I should be okay. If not, that's what the water's for as well, just to add a little bit of that and it just rejuvenates it, I suppose is the best way to describe it. Don't claim to be a painting expert. There we go. So that is a decent base coat. So now we just need that to dry and then we can work on some of the touch ups. So whilst we're just waiting for that to dry, I've just mixed up what's left. So it's actually quite a bit darker and I've just cut a very thin strip of sponge. And all I'm going to do is use this to just get in between here and fill in these. It's not the end of the world if it kind of smudges because if I just wipe over it, it quickly blends back in up top. This is going to take a while so Probably speed this up in the video edit. As you're doing this, it's uh, definitely worth not trying to go too far because if you wait too long, it will uh, dry and you won't be able to like just go over it like I am just to smooth it out. Like even where I'm going on the edges, it's not a problem because I'm just using a dry sponge and already it's. Uh, just wiping it in and giving it a bit of like a worn effect and it's also changing the color of the base coat making it look a little bit more like what you've seen on the other rifle once again obviously doing this under camera is not as easy as uh, it is doing it yourself because I can't quite see all the angles I would normally see if I was painting it myself so yeah so I've missed a few bits there So not the end of the world, easy to fix. Just be a lot easier if I was uh, not doing this on camera. Yeah, it's probably 
realise that sponge has got a little saturated, so let's just get a clean one. Just wipe off that excess. The good thing is, even though that excess is a different colour, it's just adding a bit more of effect to the base coat. So actually, it works out pretty well. So we just need to wait for that to dry a bit and then what we can do is start doing a bit of the highlights with uh, more metallic colours and then uh, the pure silver to just do the edges and highlights to actually make it look like where the metal's worn down. Okay, so I've uh, mixed in a bit more silver to make it a bit darker. This is quite thick so I don't want this to be watery at all. I need this to be as thick as possible to do basically uh, technique I remember as a kid from uh, when I did Warhammer which is uh, dry brushing the trick is I'm just trying to do a light coating as dry as possible and then spread it out using the sponge and it just creates the different textures Like I say, as long as you keep going in the same direction, it just almost makes it look like it's a brushed steel or something. There we go. So, if you're able to see on the cameras now, so compared with the one without, I don't know what I need to do. Quick, before my paint dries out. Let's replicate that on here. So what I do is I dab it points and then that's when I start just brushing down. So you get different uh, densities of paint, I suppose the best way to maybe describe that. There we go. And then literally the last bit is just doing silver highlights and this is where I'll just use some pure silver paint and um, probably not in that pot because there's way too much black in there. Um, but I will sort that out, mix that and then give this a second or two to dry and then do the last touch ups. Okay, so just clear the palette. Let's get off. Okay, maybe not fine. And the blob of silver I don't want. Could have been worse. Let's do that down there. And then once again, it's uh, a case now, so I'll just show you on this one. So just where edges are, I just put bits of silver and then a little bit of dry brushing, very, very light, just to do a different shade of metal on top. just dab off as much as possible so it's not thick it's like really really light compared with what I've done and then just very gently just a few scuffs with the pure silver and then if I just use the other side I can just then wipe that off and blend it in turn that round now where I have edges, like on the rail, that's where I can be a bit heavier. So when I wipe it off, it just highlights that edge a bit more. Just shows like there's uh, imperfections in the metal where it's just caught and worn all the time. Now this is where I may go at a different angle over the vents so it catches on the edge but then I run across there and it just leaves a little bit of silver on the edge so yes yeah, so it just leaves a few bits of silver and it just it just gives that impression where the edge of the metal has worn the paint's not quite stuck to it There you go, so just with a little bit of highlighting on, hopefully that shows up on the camera compared with the one with no highlights. Okay, 
there we go. So, let that dry, and that's uh, all good to go now. Now, obviously the end cap will need a bit of doing, so just using what's left over of the paint, because it's already metal, I just need to add a bit of colour to it. Just make it look very, very similar. So using the exact same process, just blend in so that when it's on, it matches. And there you go, after a bit of touch-ups. Just adds a bit of detail to it. Also, just when it's sat on the end of the gun, it matches, of course. So yeah, so that's the Spaz Cage painting, easy enough done. And oh, doing a bit of a balancing act here, I think. I don't. Uh, there we go. So yeah. So there are other things we'll paint on this uh, spaz cage, uh, but the actual pulse rifle itself, there are some metal pieces to paint. Uh, just going back to spaz cage. We did this on the last video, so we're just going to spray that up in chrome because um, it looks very effective. Then you've got the metal rails on the outside of the pulse rifle. So with them. All I do, very similar technique, um, using like the black and the silver, just to make it warm with silver to highlight it so it looks like warm metal, and that way it just blends in with everything else. And that is as simple as it is to do that style of paint. So there are all the pieces that are sprayed up. Um, just to show you, all I used is just a metallic chrome paint. That's the base coat for the parts. And then we can build up the layers of paint on it and do all the wearing down and weathering effects. So this is just before it goes for the black coat spray. So you should see what looks like weird colored patches. That's actually just a bit of grease that I've brushed on over the chrome. So when it sprays through, it will basically create what looks like a worn metal effect. And then you build that up with the next layer. When it comes to uh, the black paint, basically it's just something simple like this. Uh, it's a uh, auto care paint. It works on plastic. It's just a matte black finish. And then for the olive drab, uh, the olive drab, and for the olive uh, drab, I use this. Um, this has been the best color I found for getting it as close to the original. This is the paint I used on the magazine mods in the last video to make and match the actual gun. Um, I've tried finding other olive drab paints, and like I say, this has been the best one I've found that does the job. So here they are now, sprayed in black. And you can see how the bits of silver are still visible because of where I've applied the grease. So once that dries again, you can then either wipe off the grease and reapply to include a bit of the black or you can apply on top of it depends how much of the metal you want to be shown so some of the bits is quite exposed but then you wear it back from the black to the silver and then when you put your green layer on top it creates that layered effect and like i i have gone for quite a heavy worn rifle and then i'll uh, touch it up when it's done because i've even done it on the base plate where at the bottom of the plate you'd get more wear most likely hitting the ground or being uh, thrown around and whatnot. But yeah, so just let that all dry and then it's the third coat. So here it is. It's a little bit out of focus for some reason, but that's uh, now been sprayed with the olive drab. So you can see where you've got the black to the silver where the grease is. So once that's all dried, it's a case of wiping that out, then doing a bit of touch-ups, a bit of blending, um, a little bit like what we did with the first pulse rifle. And then that should be a very battle-worn pulse rifle. Okay, so here we've got our shell all painted up with the uh, battle-worn, as I'm calling it, uh, paint job. Um, what the first modification we're going to do is for the LCD panel here just to darken it up so it's not as bright. It makes it look a bit better as I described in a previous video. Um, but basically all I need to do with that, so I've just got some tinted film here and I'm just simply cut it down to size and all we're going to do is tape that to the back of the panel and then when we fit that inside there, it will simply tint the LCD counter. So there we are with it just 
taped in place. You could even just use a thin bit of glue either side. At the end of the day, once that's on and you put the unit in, it will all hold together. That just simply pushes in. And then, obviously, you've got your LCD and the counter unit. You can just pop that in and screw it back in, just like you would with the uh, normal assembler. Now, it's worth noting when you screw this in, just be very careful with the wires because if you don't have them lined up into where they're supposed to go, you can easily nick them when you screw this on. Uh, the, where the wires come round here, if they're under there, they can get crushed by the screw. So just make sure all the wires are where they need to be. Bit of tape, bit of hot glue and key places will help. Then when you're putting it on, be very careful. It should snap on. But if there's any resistance when you're trying to put it on, just take it back off and double check the wires underneath. Otherwise, you might actually damage the unit. There we go. And that's all in. What you can do just to test it's all working is just plug it into your 9 volt battery. That you conveniently leave somewhere where you remember where it is. Like I did. Not that I uh, didn't know where I put my own battery. So you can plug that on. You've got your switch there. Turns it on and off. And then when you hit the magazine catch, that's what pushes up when the magazine goes in. As you can see, it's gone to 95. So there you go. And that looks a lot better than without it, where it's a lot brighter. Okay, the next mod that's going to be slightly different to the previous build is for putting this in. What I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be separating the wiring harness for where it connects into here with the regular shotgun. Because I'm going to be adding a working grenade launcher. I'm going to design it so I can actually just disconnect and reconnect the standard version and the version I've made to basically save you having to dismantle the whole thing for wiring. So all I'm going to do is split the wiring down here and then I'll put the actual wiring harnesses into each individual unit. So all I have to do is swap the unit, plug it in and it's good to go. Okay, so just a few things when you wire it in, get that wire under through the little groove under where the button for the stock release is. Then there's actually two grooves cut out in the plastic there for each wire. And then as you can see there, we just a bit of hot glue. As you can see there, just a bit of hot glue at a few key places. That keeps the wire up. Just get it right above the uh, two little grooves you see here. So that's where the sight will go in later, the top rail off sight, whatever it's called. Um, and it won't catch and then feed that round the metal block don't put it under otherwise it will press on it and then just leave that there for when you're going to edit cut and do whatever you want with it so from here i can pop this back in that just pops in there and then once that's in i can then put in the bolt catch everything which was shown in the assembly and disassembly video so i'm not going to show you that again so another tip, just a little bit of hot glue on the little nub in there at the top of the spring just to keep the spring uh, from popping out. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape these down to make sure they don't fall out when I'm working on all the other things. Then I can just take that tape off at the end for when I put the top shell on. Okay, so after much um, fucking around, and boy I hate soldering, uh, I've added the plug on and then obviously this part will be what's inside the grenade launcher and then i'll build a second one for the standard as well as the upgraded that way when it comes to ever changing it or tweaking it you can just disconnect this remove that without having to feck around pulling wires out and everything um, and obviously anytime you do anything with your wiring system always wise to plug it in and test it so this is where fingers crossed Oh look, it still works. I didn't break it after all. But yeah, so the idea will be simply that is what lives inside the grenade launcher. I've kept the fuse for the standard battery. So for the standard, um, I've obviously put the standard wiring loom back into it. That way I can put this in, reconnect it. As long as the wiring sits inside this section here, the mechanism doesn't catch it and the magazine won't catch it. Um, but basically that allows me to just revert it back to standard if I ever wanted to. Not sure why I would, but it's just something to share. And another slight improvement from the last video regarding the standard um, grenade launcher. So we showed this in the last video where we added a spring here to basically create a returning mechanism for the charging handle. However, I've uh, fitted two on this one because what I found with one, after a while, it got a little bit weak and it didn't snap back as much and it could easily be pulled back. But by adding a second one, if you do it right, there's plenty of room, exactly the same method as the first video. It actually makes the pull a lot, 
tougher as well as the return. And another minor uh, improvement over the first one. You'll see the grenade has been fitted in there. What I've actually done with this one is I've got the 3D printed grenade. This is a bit of a bad printed one, so I didn't use this one because it went a bit wrong there, you can see. But basically, after I've put the red cap on and sprayed it up, I've actually used some aluminium foil tape, wrapping it around the flat bits on it. And as you can see from there, it just makes the grenade look a little bit better. Oops, it says knocking the camera. As you can see from there, it just makes the grenade a little bit better and shinier over the original one so still the same mod as the last video with just some slight improvements so there you go that's the uh, standard shotgun thingy upgraded and as you can see they're much more snappy compared with the first one which uh, i think i'll have to go back to the other pulse rifle and do the same thing with that because that is miles better but there we go so that can be replaced anytime i need really now so before I fit the 3D printed grenade launcher into this, um, I am going to have to make a slight modification to this. So basically because of the design and with what's inside, this normally just has a straight run down the dummy grenade launcher. However, in the 3D printed one, it is not long enough. So what I'm going to have to do is extend these wires a little bit. Not too hard, just simply snip them, find the right type of uh, wires similar to this and just extend them. But I just need to give it about a couple more inch, just basically to allow it to feed through the 3D printed grenade launcher. So once that's mounted, it can connect into this nicely. Okay, so uh, this is all the parts that I've printed. This is about the version two now. Um, the first prototype allowed me to fix some design flaws and everything in it. So I'm gonna try and record the assembly. But basically, I'll just describe the parts we've made and how the mechanism works. So we've got the spaz cage. Uh, so obviously that's the spaz 12 shotgun cage. It's in two parts because my printer won't um, do the full thing. And I've purposely redesigned it. The original split it 50-50, but the charging handle or the grenade launch handle, when it was moving down the rail, because it moved to here, it was hitting a split in the print, which was causing problems. So by shifting it further back, so I could print that bigger size with this smaller piece on, because the grenade launcher only goes to here, it never actually gets anywhere near the split in the cage. So it actually makes the movement a lot smoother. So basically, as you can see, no issues. But when the split was here, it was catching on it and everything. So yeah, so that's the main cage got the front so that's been redesigned a few times and um, hopefully this version works better got the inner barrel this is two parts but i've already assembled them together but basically the inner barrel goes in and it's designed in two parts for a reason which will make more sense when i'm assembling it so i don't need that so yeet, yeet. um then this piece here is something I've made for when it comes to joining the parts. So the problem with having it printed in two parts is obviously structurally that is going to be very weak. So I've actually printed a solid piece that can be glued at the bottom where the join is. It also gets rid of the hole there. In fact, I've just noticed a piece of subs broke off my cage at some point that's annoying and it'll hold it together. And then the actual bit at the top here will be held together with the bolt carrier assembly. So this was a hell of a thing to design. So the original design was off a 3D printed file where someone had made, basically it was like a cosplay M8070 shotgun inside a shotgun shroud. Um, and it just had like a moving parts and it had a 3D printed grenade like this in it, just for, for looks. So what I've done is I've scaled it for a PPS shotgun shell. So I've scaled it all down. I've had to make some modifications. So there's a hole that travels through the center in there. Obviously you can see a massive slide piece in here. I've put a guide rail on here for parts and it's got the trigger housing here. The print itself is not perfect. Uh, there was a few design flaws when printing. For instance here, didn't quite print right, but it didn't uh, affect the overall functionality there we go that's the word but yeah so this solid piece on top here is purely designed for when that's all together i can then glue the spaz cage onto it and that will give it stability so between top and bottom it will be like one solid piece of course the only problem is if i do glue it 
if anything ever goes wrong, it's going to be a bugger to fix because everything here could easily be removed once it's together. The problem is the trigger because I do have to put a bolt through it. So if I've put a bolt through it and then that's living in there, I will not be able to access it without drilling a hole in this, which would kind of ruin it because on the original pulse rifle, where this will sit is about there. So if I start drilling holes and stuff like that, it's just not going to look the same. But yeah, so the fun part is the bolt carrier assembly. So I'm going to start with that first of all. So we've got the uh, the bolt carrier itself. So that's designed to simply slot in like so. Then you've got the firing pin here, which is the fun bit. Trying to get this to line up with a hole on the thing it and drop in and through. More fuck about, more you know it. That's easy to just to put them all in together. There you go, look at that. Look at that, super easy. God, there you go. And obviously, now that is not going to sit there all the time because I'm an idiot and I forgot there is a spring. Here's one I made earlier. There you go. All right, so obviously, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this because at the moment it's not fully assembled, but there's the firing pin moving back and forth. Yeah, so that's what will uh, basically strike the back of the PPS shell, that silver bit, and detonate it. So we've got the trigger. This is the second fun part. Hopefully, it should be easy because I've already assembled it once. So, so I can see the hole. It's all lined up. As soon as I try and put the screw through, it's like, nope, I don't want to play. And just for the record, this is the first time I'm assembling this uh, version 2 prototype. So hopefully, I'm putting a lot of faith in my design and hoping nothing goes wrong as I'm doing this. There we go, that's in. So yeah, so now the trigger's in. Obviously, the trigger is what pushes the firing pin. Now what I will need to do once I finish building it is I need to put a bit of a stopper here just to stop the firing pin traveling too far back. But at the moment, that touch wood isn't doing too bad. All right, so I'm gonna pray that all stays together. From there, we've got the uh, carrier, the uh, bolt carrier assembly. So this is basically the second part of the bolt carrier assembly. So this is what attached to the grenade charging handle on the outside of the cage. And this is what opens up the port for you to put the PPS shell in. Um, now, an important part of this, which it's going to be fun because I'm going to have to drill and screw it in is this piece here and what this piece does is when the so when this is screwed in place there's a spring in there which will help with the return of the charging handle but what it also does is as that goes into position that pushes the bolt carrier back so hopefully you can see that moving as you can see, there it is. And I just moved the stick. And the point of that is, is once it's in that position, this is where I hope I can hold everything together, that is what gives me the room to pop in the PPS shell. And then as it comes forward, take that off quickly, that slides, pushing it forward, holding it in place. As you can see there. And obviously when I've opened the port, that is when I can remove the shell. Now it is a little bit of a tight fit, but that is put on purpose so I don't lose the shell. But as you can see, it does swing, it clips in at the top from the board, it swings out from the front. So it should help with it being removed once it's all together. At least that's the plan. So I'll probably just pause the video here because trying to drill and screw all this is gonna be a nightmare, but I'll show you what I've done shortly. Okay, so we're back. So it's uh, been screwed in and glued in um, and on the prototype it did work but man this is uh, 3d printed so gotta be a bit careful so we've got our recoil spring and then once that's on there just line these holes up again which is always the fun part there you go so you've now got as you can see the mechanism so when it's fully closed and then it expands now the spring is a little bit big i would have liked a, a smaller coiled spring but when the barrel is in place there it all seems to fit which is good because unfortunately 
that's the hard part. I can't advise you what spring to get. It's a case of uh, find one yourself type of thing. But yeah, so there we go. So that is the bolt carry assembly. So once that's all in, it's a case of mounting that to here and this using these little plates that are here. And I've basically printed up to three because in the prototype I used two, but it was a little tight. So instead of trying to make one piece, I thought I could make th uh, one that I can stack to the size I need because there's always a bit of give when you do things like this. But yeah, so the next part is quite literally putting it all together now so yeah so putting this on this has to go in from the rear because obviously you've got the trigger on and there's the groove there for the trigger so it won't slide any other way and that just needs to be flush with the back now there is a back plate here um, and that will get screwed on at the end once I'm all done and dusted I'm gonna probably see if I can get away with not gluing in this part because if I glue that to this, I'll never take it out again. Honestly, if it breaks, it breaks. I'll just have to print a new one. I suppose it's the prototype. I wish I could have designed a better way to join the pieces together. And the reality is I can't. Unfortunately, my printer is too small to do it all in one go. So I think I am just going to have to kind of, uh, what's the old saying, risk it for a biscuit. Okay, so this part's currently glued. This isn't because... Um, the, once you put it together you need to then line up this bit here so once you've got your end cap in and all the pieces together you know where the final position is and that's where you can then drill two holes in this and then that's where you can get back to gluing so I've drilled the holes and marked them out I'm just going to remove this he says it doesn't want to come out take that off oops there you go. I'm trying to keep this piece all together. It's the blue setting. Okay, progress update. So I've had to uh, jam that in there just to hold things together. But gluing that on has proved a bit of a pain. Um, and I've figured a way around my dilemma. Um, it's like changed how I wanted it to look, but nothing major. So I've checked on the original pulse rifle, which is here. So along this bit here, as you can see, there's a bit of a gap there. If you can see daylight through there. So I could quite easily mount some screws because it looks like there's some screws mounted here anyway. So there'd be no harm in me placing one or two small screws here to hold the bolt receiver assembly in place. And the added bonus is if I take them screws out, I can then slide it out of the back so actually, it'll allow me to disassemble it for repairs if anything ever breaks with the trigger mechanism. So that's actually a pretty good benefit. So I've got the tiniest of screws I can find. And I've drilled two holes here. And got one in already. And then I'll just do the same here. And that should basically solve my problem. Okay, got the screws in holding it together already I've come up with a possible version 3 so one of the things about this is I was trying to keep it as simple as possible but I have worked on each stage so I worked on the casing then I worked on the bolt carrier then the barrier barrel then the recoil um, and everything and did it in stages and I think I missed a trick where basically when it came to the bolt carrier assembly if I would have built it in one piece were the joining part which is now covered in super glue and so are my hands if this was all one piece with the bolt carrier that would have been a lot easier to fit because it would just slide in and then i could even potentially just put two screws in here to hold it and solve the problem so i'll probably go back to the 3d printing uh, design and edit that and see if i can make one that's all in one but I have got the carry assembly all in. And if I can just do that just to show it the moves. So yeah, so far so good. I'm going to worry about the gluing part afterwards. If anything, I just want to make sure the mechanism works. So at the moment, I've just banded the front on because I'm going to put the screws in for the charging handle and then get the barrel in. And then in 
put in a shell and give it a test. Okay, so charging handle is screwed on and... So, there you go. So far, so good. Like I say, apart from the bottom part, which kind of fucked up, but you know what? One thing at a time. The last part is dead easy because the end cap is... I've just designed it to be a push fit in and out. So that way it's easy to take off for hopefully storing the battery down in here. The barrel, I said I'd explain it before. So the inner barrel is sticks out a little bit. And the point of that is it overlaps on the inside of this and holds the shell in the right position. So all that does is slides down and I'll have to uh, obviously screw that in as well. A bit like I've done with the other parts. That's in now and that's all in place. It does stick out a little bit because when the cap goes on. So line the barrel up and the cap should just pop on. And there you go. So after reworking some of the technical uh, glitches, it's now assembled, screwed in, all together. Then the next problem I found was the end cap. So the original end cap was something like this. But the problem was when it's inserted in and held in place, as this moves forward, it would push it off. And I was hoping to make it a push fit end so I could take it off, insert the battery. So what I've done, I've gone back to the workshop um, on the 3D printer, we've split it into two pieces. So we've got the cap with a hole at the bottom there. And then we've got the front piece. And what we've done is we've built a little spring retaining system, very similar to how the original works. So when this goes on, so when it's uh, inserted, this would be glued in here. And then this piece simply twists, lifts up, twists, and then you can still, it says, if you see on camera, the hole where the barrel is now lines up with the hole where you put the battery in, connect your battery, Rotate back round and it's back in place. And then the mechanism. So I've got a PPS shell. Don't hope this one's not leaking because these are terrible for leaking, I'll find it. There we go, so that's held. So we've got the PPS shell. Oops. There you go. Would be a lot easier if it was mounted to the rifle, so pop it in slides in place and then you'll hear the pop when I pull the trigger yeah that was the gas coming out but that's the PPS shell and then removing it it actually now when you as you can see now comes out and then you can just pop it out hopefully without hitting the camera but yeah so that's the prototype actually done and dusted now which is really good uh, I've just need to re-edit some of the files and then I'll probably reprint it because obviously a few bits got a little worn and whatnot. Um, and then the fun part of adding it to the pulse rifle. So uh, for painting the, oops, don't want that little screws. So for painting this, so I've already started on it. I've basically just used a bit of an acrylic paint, a bit of a sponge, and just simply brushing it on to the 3D printed parts. The good thing is, as long as I go with like the one direction, actually doesn't look too bad. It almost looks like brushed metal. And that'll just be the base coat, get it all painted silver, and then just do some fine detailing to make it look more worn. And that will be that pretty much painted. Okay, so these are the 3D printed parts for the Spaz shotgun, which will be the grenade launcher. It's obviously the grenade launcher is made from a Spaz 12 shotgun and M78 shotgun in the real thing. Um, I've painted all the parts up, as you can see. Run through the parts, uh, basically how they go together, and I'm going to basically have to wire in a wiring loom for the battery, and then a few modifications I had to make to make it fit into the existing pulse rifle. So the shell itself is simply just uh, was originally a full Spaz 12 cage that I've split where the shells normally go in. I've just put a simple plate that just basically stops the things falling out the hole because obviously you're going to have a battery and everything in there. This side, after I've printed it, I have had to cut some pieces away to make it compatible with the shell. So there's three holes there as you can see. 
that's where the normal spaz cage would fit into the pulse rifle shell. Um, I've had to remove this section here to allow it to fit in the housing properly. And then this little section here is where it makes contact with this part of the pulse rifle. So basically it sits in that groove there. So for the internals, you've got uh, two main parts, which is the outer barrel that has a thinner inner barrel that comes into this section, which is the bolt carrier assembly. You've got the actual bolt carrier there and the trigger is attached to a firing pin. Then you've got the this part which is connected to the charging handle. This is made of two parts, which is one, this casing, and then this rod you can see here that's been screwed in. And then I've just got a simple old spring, something not too strong, but not too weak. Um, you wouldn't want to use anything like an airsoft uh, spring. They are too tough for this. Anyway, so that part actually, there's a little groove there where when you don't throw the spring away like I did, Fun part is always trying to get it to line up, so bear with me one second. There we go. So once that lines in, that rod actually has a function where as it goes in, it pushes back the bolt carrier. So that actually pushes it back, which is what opens the window to allow you to pop in the shell. And then obviously it closes it and then you can shoot. And that obviously all goes in there. Now, the battery still goes in the front here. I've got the front end, it's uh, currently just drying a little bit, so I've just got to finish painting that up. Um, I was a little bit delayed with this because I redesigned the front end, because the original one, which I put somewhere safe here. That was the original one, as you can see that one's painted up. Discovered a bit of a design flaw with it, even though it worked perfectly as it wanted. Because this piece is so thin, trying to mount that into there without damaging the front wasn't uh, easy. In fact, it damaged it slightly here. So all I did is redesign it on the 3D printer. I've actually made it thicker and included a thin piece of the front here. So actually, this is dried now, so I can pop these out. So that was shut. Gives you a bit more room to put the bolt into this bit without damaging the front. And the good thing is it's designed so it pulls out over the barrel, swings round, and then gives you access to the batch compartment. A little bit like the original one. In fact, that's what I based the design of this one off. But yeah, so I've just got to finish painting that. That will go in the front. Now, I'm trying to design this so you can take it apart, but you could just glue it in. So for like a permanent thing. But basically, once that's in, I'm just gonna tap a screw in either side, sits in that groove, and it basically will stop it sliding off. Then you undo the screws, and then you can just simply slide it out, and that'll give you access to everything on the inside. Then, obviously, wiring loom, that's the fun part, so I'm gonna have to build one from scratch. Yes, here it is. So I'm gonna have to build it from scratch, and it's gonna simply feed through. Let's take this off for now. It's gonna feed through gap in the plate that I've made at the back. It will then run alongside where the trigger is, not catching it luckily, and then down through this channel here that I've made. So yeah, so they will basically, at the back of the gun, connect up to the pulse rifle workings. They'll be nice and secure in there. They won't be catching on any of the moving parts, which is brilliant. And then because it sits right here, that just runs up to the length of where the battery connector is. And the battery actually sits down this channel here. And basically there you go. Very simple. Okay, so I'm gonna try and show the assembly on the camera. It's a bit tricky doing it under a camera instead of just doing it. There is a back plate that screws on there. It's got a channel cut out for the wires here. It's also got another channel cut out for the sensor wires from the front barrel and this is where it is going to be a little bit tricky because you've got to try and assemble this with the barrel in and that will run down the side of the gun there might be a few things i have to do off camera just because it would be too fiddly to try and complete under um camera but that will run down there i'm just going to basically use a bit of hot glue to tack it in up there probably coat the wires with some black or something so you don't see them. Then this slides down the front. Once that's in place, 
There's some screws that screw into the top of those, hold it in place, which then allows this, this to slide down and on, followed by the charging handle, followed by the front end. So the wiring, like I say, too faffy to try and do it under camera, so I'll just do that quickly off camera to make my life easy. Okay, so that was completely impossible to do under camera. But yeah, as you can see now, so that slides back. I've got the wiring loom secured under there with a bit of tape just to hide it. And it was actually designed here with a groove, so there's actually enough of a gap for the wire to actually just poke out the side there. So just get that down. That's once that's in position, I can then screw all that down. And then it's a case of doing the rest with the front of the spaz cage, which once again, because I'm messing with wires, I've got to do it off camera. Okay, so once you've fed the wiring through, the wiring for the sensor can stay loose at the top of the barrel, it won't catch anything. And you'll see I've made a groove in the top of this spaz cage just so it can uh, slide on a bit like the original one, but because that was in two halves, it clamps together. Whereas this obviously being one piece, can't do that. Obviously those wires with factory, they have just taped them up for now. I'll sort the plugs and everything out from the later, but they'll just double back in with the battery into the hole under there. So the only thing to do now is to put on the barrel holding part. I don't know what its proper name is. I've completely forgot, I'm gonna be honest with you. But basically that will slide on. And then I've designed these two pieces here that slide in between each of them to hold it all in place. And that way I can just simply slide them out and take them apart if I ever need to. So that one just slides straight down, he says, he hopes, he prays. Come on, get the barrel out of the way. This is a lot harder to do under camera, there we go. So that slides down to there. And then the large bit here goes in and slides down, followed by in there, and there you go. And then that being the final piece. So there you go. So that is how I solve the solution of mounting the original to the new. There we go. So like I say, just need to pop some screws in there to hold it all together. Then all I need to do is put, put the front cap on, which I'll use the old one just to show you for now. Um, but basically that goes in there because it slides through the actual barrel. That's what holds it all together. So yeah, and then the other last bit is to put on the charging handle, which I have here. But that slides down on here and there's two holes here which have to screw into those two holes there. And there's a little piece that joins it in between, which bridges the gap between the cage and the handle. And then that is what allows the racking mechanism. And once again, that is fiddly. I'm gonna just quickly do it off camera and then I'll show you what I mean. So there we go, that's with the handle on. I've just put the version one end on for now, whilst I'm showcasing this, but that's all ready to fit in the pulse rifle. Obviously, I still need to do the wiring loom, but that'll be the last thing to do. Um, but yeah, but basically now you can rack it, pop it in. Now it is a little tight compared with the prototype, but actually, you know what? I can live with it because it were in, and plus all the paint I've put on has probably added a few layers, which has reduced how smooth it was. Um, but also, it's actually not bad for if I'm wanting to put the shell in because um, it holds back. The only problem is you've got to be careful because if you bang it, you're going to trap a finger, <laughs> which probably isn't good. But yeah, so that is all ready to go. So here's another shot of it. I've actually got the uh, proper front end on now and I've finished all the wiring. It's got the fuse on. That'll uh, tuck up inside the pulse rifle and obviously you've got thingy. But I just want to very quickly show you the mechanism. Well, basically, slides back, you drop the shell in, forward, and then, there you go. That's it going off. Obviously, no BBs, because I'm not stupid. Well, debatable. So, uh, this is just part of the uh, printed grenade launcher. The fitting of it, obviously, is going to go in here, but there is one modification I need to make to the case. So because there's a trigger and this section doesn't have the trigger normally, because obviously it's just a dummy, I'm going to have to remove a small section here. Get that on camera. 
just a little groove off either side and that just allows the trigger pull to actually be pulled back because that's where it would sit and at the moment as soon as you pull the trigger it hits there and it needs to go back to there so I just need to remove that small section so there it is it's in just got obviously put the front bits on put the top shell on the wiring loops around here and the fuse now lives up in this area um, but obviously I've designed it so that can detach, that can come out, the standard one can go back in and revert it back to normal. Not sure why I'd ever want to do that, possibly if that ever broke, but we're almost done. And there she is. It's finished. So that is a pulse rifle with a working grenade launcher. Just a few little mods to put on, a bit like the last one. Just put the magazine adapter in, puts the iron sights on few minor little tweaks and this project is finally done with the exception of something else that i'm going to do off camera but i'm going to create something pretty cool for it to live in it's been a long fucking painful journey to create this little bad boy but i'm very happy with it so we're going to be fitting the magazine follower guide so as you can see there's the thompson's magazine guide there and then this is the 3d printed file and um, good thing is it's got slanted sides to ease the mag in and it just fits perfectly in there you just have to glue it in so as we learned from the last pulse rifle we're just going to glue it to this half of the pulse rifle that way if you ever taken the other half off it doesn't get in the way and it doesn't mean you actually have to faff around trying to unglue it so i've just got some Bostical purpose glue. It's a nice quick setting and the good thing is it's ugh, I want to say it's not exactly a permanent bond If you did ever have to remove it, it can be forced off and then peeled off not that I can see why you'd want to remove it Then we're just going to carefully drop it in here Get that in place and then one tip for you Just get a spare magazine and pop that in All right, there we go. Sorry. I had to with it off uh, camera but yeah so now I've put that all the way in it's inserted into the Thompson so that will hold it in position whilst the glue sets and it also guarantees it's lined up for the next time when you're taking the magazine and out so it does make the magazine changes a lot easier so another new uh, or shall I say different modification that I'm doing on this pulse rifle in the previous one we showed some magazine magwell mods and then you've got the base plate and there was also a base plate that allowed you to attach the magazine into it. Well, this is a slightly different design to the one that was shown in the last video. I'm going to be testing out. I've already painted it up because I'm at the moment painting it. But with this one, the magazine actually fits in here, clips into these two places. So it goes to here, slides back. And then you slide this piece down the guide into the base plate and that holds it in. Now, the advantage of this base plate over the other one for the previous design, this is a lot sturdier. It's a lot thicker. Uh, it hasn't got the angled edges that allow you to easily access the wheel. But actually, I can, I've can. i got big hands and I can fit mine in there to rotate the high cap wheel. So that's actually pretty cool. So obviously, I've got to paint it up. So here's the uh, version 2 base plates all painted up, slightly worn, two different obviously not a clone of each other but it just shows that they're actually in use and then like i explained in the previous video sorry excuse the rattle it's still got bbs in the magazine with this one slides in there you then put this piece down the back there and then just line it up push it down he says okay. i don't just need to give it a little bit of welly one sec. There we go. Down it goes. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just having to put a bit of force on because it is designed to like really hold it in. And there you go. So you should see that there. Now it has got two little grooves to try and let you pull it out, but it's a very tight fit. So honestly, I think the only time that's going to come off is when it breaks. You can still get to the wheel through there. And that's definitely more sturdier than the original one. So in comparison, there's the first one, there's the second one. Now one interesting thing you might notice straight away when the camera focuses, he says, come on, is the little thumb tabs. 
So on the pulse rifle, it's this way around, the airsoft pulse rifle. On this one, for some reason, it's the other way around. Now, I thought that was an error on the print part, but when you actually look at the film pulse rifle, it is actually that way around. For some reason, on the airsoft version, they got it upside down. So you can even see it here with the two nubbins at the top, which is really bizarre. It's a very odd detail that I, you know, didn't notice until basically the end of the project. Not that it's a big problem, to be honest. But yeah, so that's two different types, as you can see. This one's a lot thicker. That one's a lot thinner. So another modification that I showed in my last video, but I didn't really do an explanation of how I made it in detail. Basically, it's putting an adapter on here to allow for um, you to fit tracers. So what I've got here is a 11 mil to 14 mil adapter. Um, it's spur, you know, you could probably buy one. Um, you could even probably, if you're good at 3D printing, find something like this to print. You could even probably design something that slides over. But what I found the easiest thing to do is just measuring the outer diameter Sorry for the audio thanks, I turned away from the camera. So just measuring the outer diameter on there, which uh, just in case anyone's wondering is 18.7 millimeters. I basically got this tube, I think it was about a fiver off eBay. I got one with the same diameter on the inside. So it is actually quite tight fit. And then all I do is cut a little piece off. This fits inside. It is a little loose, but with a little bit of tape, you can tighten that up then wrap it in something or even leave it as carbon fiber if you want and that basically allows you to fit a simple tracer something like this where you can just screw it in and then you can have a tracer on your pulse rifle yes it doesn't quite look legit for the thingy but if you're using this in a game you know let's be honest playing indoors tracers are pretty handy so one slight difference to this to the original one the original one was a tight fit with a cable tie around just to try and put a bit extra pressure and hold it on i'm actually going to try and attempt something so whether this works or not we'll find out uh, in this video but basically a little box of grub screws i'm going to drill a little hole in this and fit a grub screw so i can then clamp it onto the barrel which will be a bit better than tape and a cable tie whether it works or not we're going to find out very shortly all right so there we go success and i've now got a grub screw in there to lock it onto the barrel so that's good. Obviously, I will wrap that in tape so it doesn't look like carbon fiber and it's just black. But yeah, so there we go. So all I need to do now is put a bit of tape around this. And you can obviously, depending on your preference, have a 14 mil or 11 mil thread at the end. Obviously, I have 11 for my tracer there. I just need to put a bit of tape around there so it is snug in there and it isn't wobbling around. There we go. That's wrapped around so it's quite snug. All I'll do is put a little bit of glue on there, slide it in, and then that sets. There we go. Some gorilla crazy glue or whatever it's called it's probably pretty good stuff this actually so i'm just gonna put a little bit on smear it around and then when i slide it in any excess i can just wipe off and then use that seal and that should keep that in pretty tight so it's uh, the other one never fell off right so like i say i'm just gonna spread that around so it's nice and even and just slide that in carefully don't no, obviously put too far and then I can just smooth the excess off around the edge. Like I said, it doesn't matter if it sneaks, it's gonna get covered with tape anyway. But there you go. So that's a little uh, thread adapter for the pulse rifle, easily made. So, slide on, tighten up the grub screw. And there you go, one adapter. So, here we are. This is uh, the finished products. So we have the first pulse rifle that we did some basic modifications to, bit of basic paintwork and everything else. And this is the second pulse rifle where we uh, did a lot more detail work on the paint and we added the 3D printed grenade launcher. So it's a fully functional pulse rifle. But just out of curiosity, which one's your favorite? Please feel free to put it in the comments below. So here's some uh, 3D plaques for the Pulse Rifle that I found on Thingiverse. Um, now this one was originally this small, but as you can see, it didn't really print the quality right. For some reason, my printer just can't print small. It's supposed to look 
like that. That's one I bought off eBay. Um, but that's one that, the set, well, that's this one, but I've just enlarged it. So I also found this one. And then I found another one that's just a big Wayland Utani logo. So I'm going to be using these along with these that I made earlier. And I've just touched up the paint to give the metal detail on it to make it look a bit better. These are all going to go into a case with the pulse rifle. So when I'm finished, it's going to look like um, a case. It'll have Wayland Utani logo on the top with this plaque saying about the pulse rifle being commissioned. Then on the inside, it'll have the big plaque and the small plaque, the pulse rifle, the grenades, which will have the grenades set out like this so you can see them. And then what I'll do with these ones is I'll mount them into the case face down. That way you pull these out to use. They're just for show. And then I can have the magazines in and basically it would just be like a complete all-in-one kit for the pulse rifle. And that is it for this video. Um, I will be absolutely honest. Uh, unfortunately, some videos whilst filming this did get a little bit corrupted. Um, I've tried to piece together as much as I had from what I had. So I do apologize if some of the uh, footage seems a bit jumpy. And I also again apologize for some of the audio being a little bit wonky. But this has been a project I've been working on and off for over two years now. And to finally have it completed is just, you know, brilliant. I absolutely love what I've got. Um, funnily enough, I started off with one pulse rifle and I ended up with two by the end of it. But you know what? It was absolutely worth it. I really hope you've enjoyed these videos. I really hope they uh, can help you if you decide to do any uh, modifications to the pulse rifle. If you do have any questions please put them in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them as best I can. But that is going to be it for now. So I'm just simply going to say thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. The fuck?